Thank uh, you. Can you get uh, metrics oh, from uh, uh, complex uh, measure quite like Jitter uh, and uh, 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 Echo or things like this? No, so guys, we have like one minute to five so so seats, so or if you need to discuss more, to please uh, okay. outside because we get closer yeah, we, to the end and we don't do we make a bond wise analysis and master the metrics of finance. No. Yeah, I ah. Sorry, I, uh, Sorry, I need to give it, yeah. give it back. Uh, thank you for help. <laughs> <laughs> the restart because maybe it doesn't feel the monitor. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Just hold on, maybe I need to restart because sometimes it helps. Oh, okay. Mm. I think my job is a bit too much for this left side. I'm so happy. Huh. Nice meeting nice meet you too. Okay. It doesn't happen on Windows, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah. I thought this was your booting lane of good old guy. Yeah, <laughs> it's Manjaro, it's not. Asta nu te bazezi foarte mult? Stai, mă pic să... Văd că la mână e. Da, de ce nu apare pe ăsta? Nu apare pe video pe ăsta. Okay, we are ready to start. Have your seats and uh, not to get more delays. We are already one, two minutes over. Please, go ahead. Hello, everyone. My name is Teofil Vavazianu. It's my first speak, so I'm a bit nervous and please take me easy. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much. Um, this topic is about uh, fraud mitigation using traffic pattern monitoring with CG rates. A fancy title, what can I say? Um, about me, uh, I start at uh, a software developer at ITCSCOM, company that offering VoIP and billing platform implementation since Sorry, I said it's my first and I remain without air a bit. Uh, since um, 2007, uh, we're focusing exclusively on CG rates. Uh, I finished my, I taking my bachelor degree in computer science and after that I joined the master program Big Data. That's my life in a nutshell, I can say. Now, um, who knows about CG rates or who heard about CG rates? Quite a lot of people. Uh, CG rates is a real-time enterprise billing suite. It's a fancy title also, but it's like plug and play. That's what CG rates is. It's an open, open software software, 
open source software. Full source are available on GitHub. We don't have private ads in repository. Everything we want to be full transparent. So you can see the issues, the code, it's entirely free. So uh, we have a strong and, uh, and vibrant community behind. So they help a lot. If, I don't know, let's say we by mistake and made the commit and some things break, the, com the community report, I don't know, in let's two or three hours, something like this, and we change, fix it, and that's all. It's performance oriented. We have our built-in cache system. Uh, the primary reason for this is that we want to be fast, like very fast. Uh, imagine that you querying the database for an object or something. Uh, this query can take a bit, let's say one second, well, and you get. With the uh, cache system, it's like in a few milliseconds, maybe nanomillisecond. It's very, very fast. Let's, you don't you don't have the time to start number that you are you have the result in my opinion the most important thing it's test driven development have more than 5 5k test as a part of the build system we have uh, three type of test unit testing cover the most of code uh, like uh, i don't know a conversion function or something. We have integration test and we have call test. Um, we take the calls and simulate on how it goes. Siege rates is also a modular, have a modular ar architecture. Everything has an API. So just take the CG rates and you will find an API for everything. Maybe 1% don't have, but if you open a future request on GitHub, we can make it, it's easy. Um, I won't talk about uh, so much about uh, future reach, just focusing on a few. Um, the main, it's online and offline charging system. So cover both multi-tenancy from day one, rating engine with derived charging. This means that uh, you can take the CDR and derive as many times as you want. For example, I get a CDR and I want to rate with different rating plans three times or with different four rating plans or I don't know, just how you configure. Session or event charging with balance reservation and refunds. This applies in um, prepaid mode. So let's say that you set a debit interval for an account for 20 seconds. We take the amount from the balance for 20 seconds and if the call ends faster than, we refund the increments. So uh, the balance won't be lost. CDR logging, fraud detection with automatic mitigation, we'll talk immediately. LCR with QS bundles, call statistic, diameter, radio server with process templates, standard agnostics. That means you can define your own templates for diameter. So you get a request, you create your templates, how the event will arrive in CG rates and how we'll be sent next. And it's, it's compatible with any standard. So you have full control about what's came in and what's go out. Resource allocation controller, built in high av availability and dynamic partitioning support, agile in developing new future. That's how CG rates evolve through the years. Now, you can see in the first picture, the evolution. In years, 
in the middle picture, the activity. Um, earlier I said that CG rates have a modular ar architecture. The, that means in CG rates everything is structured in subsystem. Um, this subsystem can be standalone, so isn't used. You can use for everything and outside the CG rates. Um, most of the code for them was written, and now we are focusing on fine tuning to increase the speed. I don't know, fine tuning, you know. And uh, in the right picture, uh, the community. Don't exist a day without a commit. In every day, we made the commit, made the change. That's it's a schema, let's say, about subsystem. Down, we have the agents. The agents are like small things that communicate with sessions. And from there, in session ha happens all the magic. In sessions, uh, create the CDR, refound the increments, all. Um, the agent talk with the session. And from there, uh, the session send the CDR to CDR server. CDR server can receive uh, CDRs not from session, but only from files or from, I don't know, anything you want. You want. <coughs> After that, you can online exports, again, for, for uh, prepaid. After a call end, you just export to somewhere you configure, or you can store, or you can send to other subsystem to make other procedures, like go to stats, calculate some metrics, from there go to threshold, and you know, something like this. Now about the fancy title, fraud mitigation. Accounting or account service has two methods to handle this. First is action trigger and the second is threshold. Action trigger is a bit older and soon will be deprecated in favor of threshold. Um, action trigger is still built in so balance operation cannot avoid it. Uh, fraud mitigation for resource, for star CDR, for sessions. For all this, you just have to create a connection from resource to threshold, and there you have the fraud detection. Now, a bit about threshold service. Like I said earlier, it's a standalone subsystem, can be used outside of CGRA scope. Um, you can connect internally. You just made the connection as say that it's internal or remotely. It's performance oriented and using filter as uh, accepted list. Some of the advanced functionality, uh, multiple filters, types. Um, this, this filters are, uh, how to say, uh, are centered. So every subsystem use this. So if you understand a filter for threshold, you understand the filter for each subsystem. <sighs> Whew, breathe a bit. About the next one, we'll talk about uh, in a one, two minutes, when, where I will show you an example of an AP, AP call and how we can set a threshold. Action executed on match. A threshold can execute multiple action. So for example, let's say uh, you want to be informed about an account if an account was closed and close that account. Or you want to, I don't know, receive a CDR and do stuff with them. So it can support multiple action. Here, we have an example of API call 
where we set a threshold profile. The first two, tenant and ID, are used to make a unique key, so an, like a an unique identifier for the threshold. So we can have duplicates. So the combination of tenant and ID must be unique. Second, the third, uh, the filter IDs. It says it has two filter. First filter is of type string. Um, the field name is balance ID, and the value is default. Just a bit. Uh, no, this one. Okay. So the filter says is string balance ID default. So the filter will check the event, will check for the field balance ID, and will take the value and will compare the value in our case meta default with the value that we put in filter, meta default, and it's a match. The next filter says it's a meta GT, greater than. Uh, we'll take the value of units and we'll compare with the value that we are given, 12. So in our case, the value of units is 12.3, which is greater than 12. After that, Activation interval. Activation interval says that you want a threshold to be active just for a period of time. One day, one month, one year, ten years, I don't know, depends on you. Max hits says that how many events can threshold not support isn't the right term, but how many hits can he take. So, for example, in CG rates came, came an event, and from there we sent to threshold. So, when a threshold match, we say that uh, it was hidden. So, we have max hits, mean hits. Mean hits uh, says that <sighs> um, says that how many hits take to become active. So for example, you, you gave a penalty. So you, after three penalty, your threshold became active. And it will run only for two process. Mean sleep is, says that after a threshold was hit, uh, go to sleep. Go and rest a bit until another take your responsibility. Uh, blocker, if you have multiple threshold that match the same event, blocker says, uh, execute the first threshold, then stop. It's like a barrier. Wait, it's used for ordering. Um, imagine that we have two thresholds, exactly the same, but the weight is different. The threshold with the bigger weight will be executed first, then the others. Like I said earlier, action, we can have multiple action IDs for uh, threshold. Uh, the first action, it's used to disable an account, so the account won't be active. The second is to inform. Next, we have an example of process event where uh, this event came from stats. So you see their metrics. And if you don't like our metrics, you can configure on your own metrics. So for example, meta, sum, diaz, account. That's a custom metric. Or meta average, diaz, extra fields. That's also a customized metric. Down there, as the result, we have the ID of the threshold that was hit by the event. There is an event from account, and um, you can see the event have different uh, fields. Now, some use cases. For the accounting, where when monetary balance goes below 2 euro. It's like account send an event to threshold, threshold verified, and says, hey, you, have, you only have just two euro. 
So in that moment,